All right, so first off here with Inventor started, first thing we need to do is we're going to go New. So we're going to go up to click to New. Uh, when it comes to New, we just need to double check, make sure that you're on English. And we're going to start a new part file. This is a little bit of recap from what we've already done in the past, but we're going to start a new part file. So we're going to go Standard IPT. Um, it should come up to this nice bluish gray screen. Once you're there, we're going to go ahead and start our first sketch. We're going to go up here and start 2D sketch. And our first sketch we're going to draw on our top plane. So we're going to come here to our top plane, click on it, and we're going to be ready to draw on our top plane. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start our first sketch. Um, in Inventor, unlike AutoCAD, I use the rectangle command a bunch. Um, because you are drawing simpler parts and drawing multiple, or sorry, simpler sketches and then adding multiple sketches together. So the rectang rectangle command is really pretty common. So I'm going to go up and click on rectangle. And I'm going to place a rectangle around the origin. Remember this yellow dot here in the center, that's called the origin. So I'm just going to start up here, down and around the origin, something about like that. And that's got me a rectangle centered around the origin. Next, we've got to constrain this. We've got to constrain it both for size, using the dimension constraint, and we've got to constrain it in location, centered around the origin, using our just other constraints here. If you remember from the other day when we did that first little drawing, the two that we started out using was this one called horizontal constraint and this one called vertical constraint. I'm going to start there with that first one called horizontal constraint, so I'm going to click on it. When you click on it, you just go down and you hover over top of a line. Um, notice when I hover over top of this line, I have a perpendicular yellow line up here. When I hover over the line on the side, I have a parallel um, yellow line up here to that line. What you want is that perpendicular line. And what you're going to do is you're going to move down the length of that line until you have that green dot appear at the midpoint of that line. So when that green dot appears, you click and select that as the midpoint of that line. And I want to center it up to the origin right there. What that does is slide that over so it's centered up nicely, and that's there. Now, one thing, and the reason you always do this, I'm going to undo mine here real quick. The reason you always do it, you always do it that way and you hover over top of it, because sometimes when you go into your drawing, it could be set in this orientation. So when I click on my horizontal constraint, you would think, okay, I go down there and I hover over my horizontal line and find the midpoint of it. But ah, notice when I hover that horizontal line, I have that parallel line that appears to it. So in this instance, Oh, no, I don't click this line. Instead, I go over here and pick this line on the side and find it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back to where I was before and do it that way. Okay, so there, I'm going to go ahead and go back and do my horizontal constraint. Um, oh, I'm going to rotate this back once again. There we go. From there to there. Then I'm going to do the vertical constraint. Vertical, I'm going to pick the line over here on the right and my origin. And that has this block centered up now nicely, vertically and horizontally. Remember what that does is when I grab my top line, drag it up and down, it stays centered up. When I grab my side line, drag it side to side, it stays centered there as well. Okay, so now I have this constraint in position. Now I need to constrain it in location. Or sorry, I have it constrained in location. Now I need to constrain it in size. So to do that, I'm going to come up to my dimension toolbar and click on it. And I'm going to get my width dimension first. So you're going to come over here, you're going to click on the line on the left, and come across and click on my line on the right, and pull my dimension up and above. Notice when I do this, what it does, is it highlights this line here in blue, and highlights this line in blue. So what that's telling me is, it's telling me the distance between those two lines are going to be whatever number I make this. In this instance, I am going to make that three inches, I think. Let me look. No, I lied. Two inches. Make that two inches. Now, I'm going to go ahead and undo mine here real quick and show you a little bit of difference here. So, another way to do this is you could just click on this top line and drag it up. Notice how it's different, though. Highlighted in blue is that line. So, if I do it this way, I'm making the length of this line two inches long. I'm not making the distance between these two parallel lines that amount, but I'm making that line that length. It's not quite as good to do it that way. Nine times out of ten, this will work for the drawings you're going to do, but there will be that one time that you hit it all of a sudden, 
and your drawing's going all there, weird compound angles and everything else, you're going to say, Mr. Wooster, it's not working. And I'm going to look to see how you dimensioned, and I almost guarantee you're going to have dimensioned this way. Got a little bit lazy, clicked on the line, and drew, drug it up above. So all I'm saying is, get to the habit of not doing it that way, of just clicking on that top line and drag, dragging the dimension up, like so. Instead, dimension from this parallel line to that parallel line, and again, making that two inches. All right. From there, we are going to dimension the height of our drawing now, from the top to the bottom line, and we are going to make that three. So we made this little two by three block. If it is all full dark blue, it is fully constrained, and you're good to go there um, with that drawing. Um, just as a side note, I always, typically, I constrain the top, uh, top line and the line on the right if those two lines are available on full length. Um, later, we'll do some other drawings. Where you see I don't do that, and there will be reasons why, and I'll kind of explain those as we go. Um, dimensions, typically I pull above and to the right also, and that's just kind of getting into a habit of how you create drawings. All right, from there, go ahead and finish your sketch, and we'll pause there for a second. All right, so from here, uh, we can zoom out there a little bit, and there we see our 2-inch by 3-inch block. Our next step, what do you think it might be? Extrude. Kind of like... Everything here in Inventor, your next step is kind of the next one over. So our next things could be Extrude, Revolve, or any of these others. But we're going to stay with the first one there, Extrude. So we're going to click on Extrude. It automatically selects that block. Now, here's what I want you to get used to doing. It, well, I should say, what one did I tell you I want you to get used to doing? Direction 1, Direction 2, Symmetric or Asymmetric? Symmetric. Nine times out of ten, you're going to use Symmetric. Um, it just goes both ways. Um, on the origin, which keeps you centered up on your X, Y, and Z planes, and it just makes things a lot easier. Um, we are going to do that at a half of an inch. So go to 0.5, and OK, and that part is done. All right. Our next thing we're going to look at is this. Um, up here above, notice these two different little drop downs. There's one over here on the right. If I hover here over that one, it says Material. Um, this one over here, or sorry, that was on the left. This one over here on the right, hover over it, and it says appearance. What you can do if you click on these, you can set your object to different types of material. There's gold, there's glass, there's lead, there's rubber, there's polystyrene, all these different things. With this first list that says, again, material, that'll set your object to that type of material and the properties of that type of material. So if you set that to gold, your block is going to have the weight of gold, it's going to have the strength of gold, it's going to have all the properties of gold. Later on in Inventor, once we do some more advanced things, you'll see that you can actually estimate the weight of what you've created. Um, the robots we design, we can estimate the weight of those robots. Inventor will do it for you if you set the right materials to the different parts of your robot. So obviously gold will be really heavy, and polystyrene down below here would be really light. So, again, this one was uh, for sending the material to that material. We're not going to worry about that right now. Later on, we'll mess with that. What we're going to mess with is the next one is just the appearance. We're going to make it look different. Instead of this boring gray part, we want to add some color to it. So we're going to click on this one. It has a big old long list of different materials you can do there. Um, I usually go with some of the more just solid colors, you know, beige or, or canary. Oh, that's pretty or cyan, you know, whatever. That's typically what I go with. I really don't care what you pick. Uh, just pick some sort of material there. Ooh, foil gold, sure. Actually, I like to say, I typically like the one with solid colors better. I'm going to go light red, sure. So there we go. There's that first part set to a color. Uh, okay, so there we have a color picked. Now we're going to go ahead and just save this. So let's go up to File, down to Save. Um, this is one with Inventor. It is a little bit different than AutoCAD. I don't want you to get used to going Save As. I do want you to get used to just going Save on Inventor. So go to Save. But now we have to take it to a place to save it to. Um, I want you to save it to a quarter four folder, which you may or may not have created yet. So let me get to where mine is. I'm going to go CAD 1, 2. I'm going to go to fifth hour. I do not have a quarter four yet, so I'm going to create my quarter four. Inside a quarter four, I want you to create the folder we're going to use right now. It's called a practice folder. 
You could also, while you're there, create an activity folder, which you'll use later today. Whoop, ah, my activity part did not show up. Activity. Um, we are going to save it inside your practice folder. And we're just going to save this first one as block one. Just inside your practice folder called block one. And save that. 